점수 잡는 hackers. So when we begin with question number 20 right away, what are they presenting? The monthly snow in and hail in this specific area. So we have January, February, March, and April, and the question goes, the graph shows the amount of snow, what we just read through, so let's skip that sentence, in November of that year. Notice how they're only presenting up to April, and they're telling us that in November, the amount of snow was 23% less than average precipitation four months of the year. So what do you have to do? You have to find the average for the four months and we're applying a 23% decrease. So we're only looking at the remaining how much? 77%. Which of the following is the closest to the amount of snow in November of 2008? So we have to go back and we have to actually find the average for the four bar charts. Okay, so the first number for January is going to be about 25, 6, 7. It's slightly less than 27, so I wrote 26.8, right? And the second number is going to be 15 here. So you go 17, 18, 19, 19. And then the third number is approximately how much? We have the 15 line. So I guess like 15.5. And then the last number is going to be 1, 2, 3.5. And the average is the sum divided by the number of terms. You plug this in. I'll just let this equal to A. And you apply the 23% decrease. And what do you guys get as your final result? Value of 12.5. So the match is C. OK? Very good. So let's move on to question number 21. It took a while to actually figure out how to solve this, but there's a very easy way. You just tackle through the answer choices. So when you begin with the question, they're like, oh, we have two real numbers, A and B. We have a relationship such that the difference between two numbers is actually negative. What does that mean? B and A are going to be in that relationship. A is a greater number compared to B. And the sum is actually greater than zero. So you can see that when you combine the two inequality statements, does this make sense? The first one, and a plus b is greater than zero, so that's what we're left with, okay? And um, neither a nor b is equal to zero, and they're asking for a must be true statement. So I was staring at the second one. I was like, hmm, what can I do? And then from this point on, I try to subtract b both sides. So I have negative a and that. And what does this mean? Well, it can mean various things. If you move A or if you add A both sides, you're left with the conclusion that A has to be greater than zero. And then you look through the answer choices. So for instance, the first one. If A is greater than zero, should the absolute value be less than B? I think that's an incorrect statement, right? So you get rid of it. And the second one, A plus B, the absolute value, being greater than the absolute value of B. If this is quite difficult, you can plug in some of the numbers. So for instance, if you had b as a value of negative 5 and a a positive 2, we can actually refute this claim as well, right? So you're left with two answer choices of c and d. So for instance, for c, you can plug in the same number and d goes as well. But from this point on, you can actually solve the absolute value as well. So when you get rid of the absolute value, you have to solve both the positive and negative version. So if you have positive a plus b being greater than a plus b, that doesn't make sense, right? And if you look at the negative version, any thoughts about this one? If you move a to both sides of this one and b here, can that be less than zero is our next question. Or is that a must be true statement, right? So you go through them and you cross out everything and you're left with the final expression of D and that's your match, okay? So I guess the easier, faster way is using the two points and just go through answer choice B, C, D, okay? So let's move on to the next question of number 22. They're presenting a graph, and let's look at it real quick. We have five different nonmetals of, in terms of 2007 and 2010. And the question's like, oh, if you wanted to plot the scatter plot, and 2007 is on the x-axis, 2010 y-axis, how many points would lie below the graph of y equals to x? So what does this mean? Y is equal to x is going to refer to a one-to-one -one relationship, right? They're equal to each other. But how many would lie below this? So when you think about this, the x-axis 
represents the data set of 2007. And the y-axis represents the data set of 2010. And if you want the number of points that lie below this, it has to have a value that's less than 1. Does that make sense? So you go back to your bar chart, and you're like, oh, how do you make this true? You're going to count the number of substances that has a greater 2007 bar compared to 2010. So when you look through it, you have this one, and Mika works, but none of them work. Therefore, how many total? The first two. That's why 2 is our match here, OK? So let's move on to question number 23. The average of RNS is 41. What's a synonym for average? It starts with an M, mean, right? OK. So you have the average of RNS, the sum divided by the number of terms, equals to 41. And the average of S and T is equal to negative 2. That's how you approach this. And the simple sum, notice how it's not presenting the average. It's just the sum of R, S, and t is 15. Which of the following gives the average? What we're ultimately looking for is the average of these two numbers. So how do you go about solving this question? What I did was, OK, from the first part, I did the sum of two variables is equivalent to 82. Does that make sense? And then from the second part, I was like, OK, s plus t, the sum is negative 4. And then the final question, equation, I have r s t 15. And I have to somehow figure out a way to find the value of r and t. And I was staring for this for a while. And I was like, OK, if you add the two equations here, what result do you get? r plus 2s plus t. And the sum is going to be 78. Does that make sense? When you add the two, that's the one in red. And then you can actually eliminate some of the variables here by subtracting the first one to the second one. r minus r. S, they disappear, and you're left with the conclusion of 78 minus 15, 63. And I think we're done, right? If you use this, you can find R. If you use this, you can find T, and then you're done, right? So what happens when you plug in some of the numbers? What is the overall average of the two variables? Negative 24, so your match is C. Do you guys get that? OK. Let's move on to question number 24, a geometry question. And they're like, oh, the radius is 4. So I label them out. The length of minor arc AB. So there are going to be two arcs of AB, but the minor is a shorter one. That's the major arc. It has a length of 8 over 3 pi. And they're asking for the degree measurement of B, C, O, oh, this angle here. So how do you go about solving this question? We should look at the sector here and come up with the equation for finding the arc, right? So you have 2 pi r, but we know the radius. And when you're applying the angle ratio here, everything simplified should produce a value of 8 over 3 pi. And I think we can find the angle measurement. What does that produce? Final value of, you guys get 120. And then the remaining would be 60. And notice how we have an isosceles triangle. So it's going to be a right or equi lateral triangle. Therefore, the correct match is 60 degrees of C. Does 